Psalms chapter 41 To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. And all through the law, you were to take care of the poor, the, the, the widow, and the fatherless. That was in the law. Uh, these Democrats in, in America, they take it too far. You know, they, they're, they're, you know, blessed are the poor and all that. The liberal. you got to have a sincere heart for those who, who can't do, can't get ahead. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. I've known many people in my Christian walk. I read the Psalms. Yeah, and the other 65 books, well, I read the Psalms. See, when you just read the Psalms, you're in trouble. Psalms is an Old Testament book. It's not written to the Christian. Find me someone who, who considers the poor, and the Lord will deliver them in a time of trouble all the time. Again, you look at Paul. He helped the poor. He gave him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What more can you do for the poor man? And yet, he had a thorn in the flesh. Yeah, he spent most of his life in jail. Oh Lord, I, I you know, I, I take care of the poor, but I, this thing broke down. Doesn't the Bible say deliver in a time of trouble? It's not for you. Christ has not been born. He has not lived. He has not preached. He has not died. He has not been buried. He has not risen from the grave. You know, you say, well, we're Christians, we're, we're not under the law. Psalms is. Why do you just read Psalms? It's like a, a Christian going through the book of Acts or Matthew or Hebrews, and oh, look what I found. It's not for you. Consider it the poor. That's a Christian. You can find that in the Pauline Doctrine. But for deliver him from trouble? What, what verse will I keep quoting? Marvel not the world hates you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Paul was collecting money for the churches. They sent relief to the church in Jerusalem. And they had trouble. Paul had troubles from his own churches. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. Now, don't you just love the liberalness of those two verses? Well, blessed are the poor, they shall be. And if I help the poor, I'm going to go to heaven. Where's the blood? The blood is in the, the bulls, the calves, the sheep, the pigeons, the turtle doves. It's not in the blood of Jesus Christ. See, I can, I can take the Bible, and I know the Bible. I can teach false doctrine. Study to show thyself approved unto, unto God, a, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word. Rightly divine, that's not for us. He shall be blessed upon the earth. Earth. Who's given a literal land grant? The Jews. We're blessed in New Jerusalem. By saying the earth, that is not the Christian. And thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemy. You ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs? The Inquisitions? They wanted Christians dead and what did God turn them over? To die, on the, to die on crosses, to die on the faggots, to die all crimes of cruel deaths. You've got to be careful when you apply scripture. We're in Old Testament. David, under the law, tabernacle, not even a temple yet. Raising altar.
There's a salvation to a group of people who will help the Jews in prison, who are starving, who are sick and all that. You want to apply that today? And you'll die and go to hell. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. All right, you can, that one you can apply. Heal my soul. For I have sinned against thee. We all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. We talked about that last night in Psalm 40. To heal my soul, our soul is sealed today. In the Old Testament, your soul, you, you can do what you're supposed to and still die and go to hell. If you, if you Old Testament salvation. In the Old Testament, I'm trying to say is you were not secured. Only David and Solomon, the only ones I see that were secure. Maybe Abraham were secure. It's different in the New Testament. It's different on this side of Calvary that where our soul is sealed if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. My enemies speak evil of me. Yeah, okay. When shall he die and his name perish? Well, with that verse there, what you read in the New Testament, if you read the New Testament, where do you see the difference? New Testament says you're not to pray for the death or you're not to seek the vengeance. You're to pray for your enemies. You're to love them and help them. I, I, one guy, oh, I pray for the death. Of, you know, if you're foolish. You're not a Christian. You don't follow what, what the Bible says. Jesus said, the that, them that love me will keep my words. Wishing death upon somebody is not keeping his words. But I've read it in the Psalms. Yeah, I know you read it in the Psalms. You have a problem. You don't read it. You don't read the rest of your Bible. David had the perfect right on the Old Testament law to pray this prayer. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goeth aboard, he telleth it. Wicked man is wicked. Sooner or later, your mouth will spell out who you are. One particular person in mind, you know, he says he's a Christian, but everything he says, like, no, yeah, sure. I think as far as salvation, you're believing in a lie. Your mouth has confessed that you're a liar, and you believe it. I had his name come across the other day, and it's like, maybe I should. No, nah, I'm not going to cross it out. I'm going to keep his name in there. Every time I come across it, I'm going to pray for that poor soul. So, your mouth will speak who you are. Whether you're a Christian or you're not. Whether you're an enemy or whether you're not. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. You got to realize in life, you know what? Everybody doesn't think you're wonderful. You're not the cream of the crop. Oh, they may tell you that to your face, but behind your back is a whole different story. Especially if they're your enemy. I've had people in my face, oh, you're such a good person. Blah, blah. And then when it comes down to the firing line, when, when I'm in the battle and I'm, you know, they're pitching grenades at me, I turn around for help and they're gone. And then you find out later on the things they said about you. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast to him. That's a weird thing kind of say. 
He's got a disease. No, I don't. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Almost like saying he's going to die. It'll be the end of him. You know, that brother's over there sick, and, and, and you know, he's going to die. He, he's got this incredible disease and all that, and, and I want to go near him. He's a true Christian, I guess. Verse 9 is the Lord Jesus Christ on this planet. Yay! My own familiar friend. Not friends, friend. In whom I trusted. You see, when you study the scriptures with scriptures, you don't get it in one big lump sum. You got to get nuggets here, nuggets there, and, and gems here. And we're talking about Judas. And look what the Bible records about between Judas and Jesus. A familiar friend. Whom Jesus trusted that he held the bag of money. You think it says that Judas held the bag. Do you think that was just, oh man, you know, I got a few extra letters and tiles here. I can get some extra points if I lay this down. No, the fact is to say that he held the bag backs up Psalms 41.9. He held the bag because Jesus trusted him. Now, what, you, what makes you think of Judas's character now? He was a friend and he was trusted. And the Bible records that Satan entered Judas. Now, I'm not going to say Judas is saved. I am not. I want to make this point clear. Judas is not saved. But for a Christian, let me stretch this out. You can be a friend and be trusted, and you can't tell me that Satan can't come along and, and wipe your entire life out? You mean to tell me there's been never a Christian that has sold themselves out and ruined the name of a church, or maybe in Christian, who were friends in the church and trusted in the church? It has never happened. I don't believe it. You know, we keep, see, with Judas, you got to draw that fine line, but the Bible records that of Jesus Christ, who is God, they were friends, and he was trusted by Jesus. How's that? Jesus was 100% sinless. Jesus knew what Judas was going to do. Now, there is no free will. If Calvin is right, what do you do with verse 9? If Judas was determined and brought out by God to sell Jesus Christ out, why was he Jesus' friend? Why was he trusted by Jesus if he was signed, sealed, or delivered to be of Satan and to turn Jesus in? If it would now this is what I believe. If it was a free will of Judas and free will of all men, if it would have been Judas, it would have been somebody else. Woe be to what Judas said, did, I mean. Jesus said, woe, woe be unto you. It'd be better if that man had not been born. You know, people pick on, G on God because he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And, and this is the thing with Calvinism where you are at. Calvin believed that God predestinated everybody. That Pharaoh had no choice but to harden his heart because God hardened his heart. But it's always based upon free Free, uh, no, foreknowledge, excuse me. I want to say free will. Foreknowledge. God knew what Pharaoh was going to do, but he still gave him the chance. Knowing that Pharaoh was going to fail, he determined his heart to do, based upon God's foreknowledge, knowing Pharaoh. God knew Judas was going to do it, but giving Judas the free will, Judas did not have to do it. And then Judas doing, and God knowing that Judas was going to do it, 
Psalms 41 9 says the free will of Judas, he did not have to do what he did. Do you think if Pilate would have stood before Jesus and at one moment take his tire off and put it upon the head of Jesus <clears throat> and bowed the knee before Jesus and said, My God, my Savior. I am not going to crucify you. I am going to trust you. You think God would be sitting up in heaven scratching his head? Oh, man, what am I going to do now? Oh, that little pipsqueak pilot down there ruined the whole thing for me. Oh, let's rip up the Bible. No. Which did eat of my bread. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Judas partook of the Lord's Supper. My bread. This is my body. <laughs> Judas left the room because he didn't partake in a Roman Catholic, uh, I mean the Baptist uh, uh, Lord's Supper. See, the church all around, they will say that Judas left the room he did not partake of the bread and the wine of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's sacred among the Roman Catholics they will protect the Roman Catholic Church in that doctrine of the mass Judas left the room pick up any hundred messages about Jesus being at the room and they'll tell you at this point Judas left the room no Judas was there Judas partook of the, of the mass and died and went to his own place, a greater worse part in hell. Has lifted up his heel against me. Now why would God say heel? Why would the Holy Spirit put that? How many body parts are there in the body? I don't know. Thousands, hundreds, millions. That heel you can run back to Genesis 3.15. And if you take Genesis 3.15 and run that to Revelation 12, it says the old serpent, one of the verses in Revelation 12, right? Well, the old serpent goes back to Genesis 3.15, run it to Psalms 41 verse 9, and guess who, guess who Judas was? He was Satan. Ezekiel... It's a 28 or 38. And he dresses the king of Tyre. Now, the king of Tyre wasn't Satan. He took Satan's side. Judas took Satan's side when Satan entered into him. Now, there was no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They are in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, in the Gospels, when Jesus was on this planet, salvation was weird. How many people, when Jesus dealt with them, Went to the temple and brought an animal for sacrifice, but he said, you're saved. How about that one? How did they get saved, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? How did they get saved in the Psalms? By the Old Testament law. Based upon that, in the law and in Jesus' time, if you allow Satan to come into you and do his deeds, you are partakers of Satan. Now in this day and age as a Christian, your soul is sealed, signed, and delivered. You can't lose your salvation. But oh, you can give yourself to Satan. But you don't get damnation. Pretty good to be under grace, isn't it? Take King Saul. Where is he today? One place uh, Samuel says, Today thou shalt be with me. Alright? We know Samuel's in Abraham's bosom. But God says at one point about King Saul, because you want to go see that witch. 
And if you read that verse, it looks like he went to hell. What is it? We don't have no idea. You know, I thought I, I thought Solomon was a question of heaven or hell. But I read in the writings that the Lord completely blessed him like he did David. He called David and Solomon, you should be my son and I will be your father. All right, they're both in heaven. That's the Old Testament. Samson. What would you think of Samson if you didn't have the book of Hebrews? Well, he died and went to hell. That's what the Roman Catholic teaches. What's his, what is he named in Hebrews 11 for? Find me someone in, in Hebrews 11 who's in hell. Oh, he had great faith, but he's burning in hell. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to have a place called Purgatory. Psalm 41 verse 9 is against Calvin. Judas had all the cards stacked up for him. How about that? It did not have to be Judas. You know what Jesus told Peter at one time? He says, Peter, he says, I'm praying for you because Satan wants to shift you like wheat. He said, Are you telling me the way Jesus, he never prayed for Judas? On those times he, he went off alone and prayed in the mountain? I believe Jesus prayed for Judas. But Satan was stronger. The Bible says, few will be saved, few will enter in the gate, but many. Verse 10. But thou, Lord, O Lord, be merciful upon me, unto me. And raise me up. Now that's a quite interesting verse compared to verse 9. That's a but. You know what that but means? I just said something. Now let, let's change it. Judas went to his own place. He went down into hell. He was cursed. But thou Lord be merciful unto me. Unlike the person I just spoke about in verse 9. And raise me up. I may requite them. Repay. There's a contrast between verse 9 and verse 10. By this I know that thou favorest me. If you raise me up. If you be merciful to me. You know he's going to raise up Peter, James, and John. But he's not going to raise up Judas. The favor will be that when Peter, James, and John have their names mentioned and listed in, uh, on the frames or the foundations of New Jerusalem. You think Judas' name is going to be on one of those foundation walls? I don't think so. But this I know that thou favors me because my enemy does not triumph over me. You know, they may kill us, but we're still going to go home to heaven. We're going to still go to New Jerusalem. Jesus said about God, you know, don't fear him that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and the soul and cast it into hell. You know, there's one thing. No matter what happens to us, we will be triumphed. Even a worldly Christian will be trying. He's not going to be happy what he loses, but he'll get trying. He won't die. He said, well, we buried. Yeah, but you know what? Absent from the body and be present with the Lord. He didn't go to hell. And it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. It doesn't say the dead in Christ who were faithful. And as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. You cannot say that today. We are, this is how it would read for us. As for me, thou upholdest me in 
Jesus Christ. My integrity is why Jesus Christ came and died for me. It's why Isaiah 53 was written. And set as me before thy face forever. That will be so for us. Matter of fact, the Bible says as far as a born again Christian today, we are seated in heavenly places. We're not there. Or wait, no, we take that back. We're not going there. We are there. How about that? Uh, be bold to be, uh, appear before the throne of grace to ask our petitions. All right? How do you know this is not for the church? Verse 13. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. I, wouldn't you say that's not for us? <laughs> From everlasting and to everlasting... Amen and amen. And we finish book one of Psalms. You got to rightly divide the word. You got to see what's for you. You got to see what Paul says for us. You got to see what, what is not for us. 13 verses of 41 is, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, not the church. And as we close with that. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior.